I'm Kate Milliken, and welcome to MS Learn Online. If you have a progressive form of MS, you undoubtedly are awaiting treatment options and research advances. Joining me to discuss this topic is Dr. Benjamin Siegel. Dr. Siegel directs the Multiple Sclerosis Center and is a professor of neurology at the University of Michigan's Holton Garrett Neuroimmunology Program. Welcome to MS Learn Online, Dr. Siegel. My pleasure. Can you explain to us the types of progressive MS and how they are different from relapsing remitting forms? Well, the majority of patients with multiple sclerosis begin with what we call a relapsing remitting course, meaning they have attacks with neurological symptoms, which could vary uh, from attack to attack. But particularly early on in the disease, patients tend to recover and often go back to their baseline. Inevitably, the vast majority of patients will enter a stage that we call secondary progression when they slowly accumulate disability. They get gradually worse with a particular type of symptom. That may be weakness on one side, that may be progressive memory loss. Um, there's a, a spectrum, but what's important is the tempo um, in terms of the disability that they experience. If you ask someone with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis when their symptoms started, when it got worse, often they won't be able to pinpoint it to a particular day or week, but they'll know that today they're not the same as they were six months ago, and six months ago they, are not, they were not the same as they were a year prior to that. So it's a slow, steady decline as opposed to these acute flares or attacks. That's called secondary progression, what I just described. About 15% of patients never have the attacks, they just slowly get worse, and that's called primary progressive multiple sclerosis. Are there any treatments for progressive MS? The only treatment that's approved by the FDA for progressive multiple sclerosis is a chemotherapy called mitoxantrone, and it's, it's approved for secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Some doctors, myself included, will prescribe other chemotherapeutic agents um, off-label. In general, our impression is that these drugs work when someone is undergoing a fairly rapid decline. And it appears that for some patients, the chemotherapy can stabilize their course. Other than those uh, types of medications, there really is um, nothing that we have to offer patients that, that influence the um, the uh, uh, clinical course that they experience. Now, having said that, some of my patients do seem to benefit from intermittent steroid treatments. So sometimes we will give patients a gram of salumedrol, which is a steroid, by uh, intravenous once a month. And that seems to help stabilize patients and make them feel better. Not everyone responds to it, and that has not been proven to be um, helpful in in rigorous clinical trials because they haven't been done. I have to believe that there's some research happening in the world of progressive MS, and I'm curious about what you know and what's kind of coming down the pike. There's a great deal of research that's going on. Um, some of the research is focused on developing drugs that may help the body recover uh, from damage that is experienced during progressive multiple sclerosis. There are um, new insights being made into how the nervous system itself may block nerve cells from regenerating, for example, and we as well as others are looking into ways to interfere with that process to allow the nerves to regrow. Um, there are a lot of investigators looking into stem cells for secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. and. Even though we don't tend to use a lot of immune-based therapies for secondary progressive MS as we do during the earlier relapsing remitting phase, there is growing evidence that there is a subset of progressive MS patients who do have inflammation that's causing damage and may benefit from some therapies that we now are testing for relapsing remitting disease. And I think that's going to be subject, a subject of research in the future. Um, so I, defining patients with MRI scanning and various blood tests is to say how much of the um, damage they're experiencing is, is due to inflammation or some other process may allow us to customize treatments better for progressive MS in the future. You know, it's my opinion that we need to do a lot more research in secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, and a lot of the clinical trials are skewed towards relapsing or remitting MS, and it's time that we refocus on progressive disease. I'm personally aware of two 
uh, very early studies that are um, being initiated of drugs for progressive multiple sclerosis. One is a pill, one's an intravenous treatment. So there is some activity going on, um, but it's in the very early stages. Why do you think it's important that people start focusing more on progressive versus relapsing remitting? We have a lot of options for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis now, and particularly if patients are diagnosed early, there's a very good chance that we could control the disease. There aren't those options for progressive multiple sclerosis, and a large percentage of patients with MS are in the progressive phase as of now. According to some epidemiological studies, it's 40% of patients. I think it's probably even higher than that, um, and these patients need better drugs in order to prevent them from accumulating more disability and, and one day hopefully we'll have drugs that could help them recover some function that they've lost. And are you and your team actually doing research? Yes, um, one uh, focus of our research is on developing treatments that may help nerve fibers regrow once they're damaged in patients with multiple sclerosis. So there's a group of molecules um, called the NOGO family of molecules, and they're called that because they prevent nerve fibers from uh, re-sprouting. Uh, so they, they, they've been called NOGO. Um, and if we neutralize these molecules, we may create an environment that allows the nervous system to recover and repair itself. So that's one um, type of research that we're doing right now. Um, I also am um, involved in plans for a larger study of patients with progressive MS to do MRI scans and determine how much uh, of a factor inflammation is playing. So we, we did a study that's not published yet in which using very sensitive measures, we found up to 40% of patients with secondary progressive MS actually still have active inflammation. And those patients in our small study appear to suffer the most damage um, over the course of a one year observation period compared to patients who didn't have inflammation. And that suggests that if we can identify those patients, we may be able to intervene with anti-inflammatory or immunosuppressive agents that could stabilize their course. And it could be that in larger studies that have tested immune uh, modulating or immunosuppressive agents in the past, all comers were included. And so the, the benefit that a subgroup of patients with active inflammation um, might have uh, experienced was lost you know, in the larger study. So if a person with progressive MS is watching this video right now, what would you say to them to give them a message of hope? I and many of my colleagues are devoted uh, to discovering new treatments for progressive multiple sclerosis. I think a momentum is starting. Um, I know the National Multiple Sclerosis Society through the Fast Forward program is trying to uh, facilitate new studies in progressive multiple sclerosis. In fact, uh, Fast Forward sponsored a think tank in which representatives from academia, the, the pharmaceutical industry um, got together uh, to talk about what we could do in secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, and I know that there are plans for, for future meetings. Um, our understanding of what causes progressive MS is expanding dramatically. There's a lot of work going on in terms of MRI studies, in terms of examining tissues from patients with MS that are obtained um, during autopsy or biopsy, and in, in animal models. and novel ideas are being introduced, as I mentioned earlier, to initiate repair, maybe to block inflammation in a subset of patients that still have ongoing inflammation. Um, I didn't mention earlier, but stem cells are another active area of research. And I am very optimistic that in the future, we will be able to make uh, headway in progressive MS. Thank you, Dr. Siegel. We wish you a lot of luck. My pleasure. Thank you. If you would like to get more information on multiple sclerosis, go to nationalmssociety.org. This is Kate Milliken for MS Learn Online. Thank you for joining us.